Hello there, I'm Debbie Jones and a very warm welcome to Cruise Myths Debunked. It's a good word that, isn't it? Well, over the next 30 minutes, we're unashamedly going to be talking about the most common myths, misconceptions and cliches that cruise holidays have attracted, while in the same period as growing tremendously in popularity. But I can't do it alone, so who better to help debunk fact from fiction than cruise industry expert Steve Dunn. Steve, great to have you in the studio with us today. Thank you, Debbie. It is a good word, that, isn't it? It's a wonderful word, and Nothing actually. like a good debunking. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's start off with the myth that cruises are aimed or, or they're more for slightly stuffy older folk. Oh, no, and I don't quite know why that myth hangs around. Mm. Um, if you look at the range of different cruise lines that we have now, yeah. uh, you have cruise lines that cater for literally every single segment of the sector. So if you do like stuffy and you do like to uh, have formal evenings maybe five nights out of seven yeah. there are cruise lines that cater for that yeah. but there are cruise lines that cater for multi-generational family holidays where you've got everyone from great grandma down to the the, the youngest little toddler um, and you have uh, ships that uh, and brands that um, allow formal to be uh, optional so you will have people walking around a cruise ship that may have full <laughs> black tie on but you'll also have people that are still in very very casual clothing still in their flip-flops yeah absolutely yeah. yes yeah so it is a total myth um because i suppose when you look at it logically so many of the big ships have crashes teenage clubs so you write about the multi-generational so mm. that really is something that needs totally put into bed now that is not what cruises are about. No, and the beautiful thing about cruising is that there is, it probably sounds a cliche in itself, but there's, there's just literally a cruise for everybody. Mm. So if you're into adventure and discovery, there are small ships that will take you into little inlets and, and get you into real discovery places or the Antarctic or the Arctic or the Alaska. Uh, but then you've, if you've got a, a, um, a, an idea just to have 14 days in the, in the sun, enjoying the kids and, and grandma and everything else, there are the big cruise lines that are literally floating resorts with right. uh, water slides and surf uh, simulators <laughs> yeah. and rock climbing. So you've, you've literally got everything across the spectrum. So really, the onus is upon, well, initially the customer, you know, it, it, you've got to have an idea of what you want. Then you go into your travel advisor and they can point you in the right direction of the right cruise for you. So really, as long as you choose the right cruise, it's for anyone. Hmm. I, 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 that would be my advice actually would be first of all do your own research and with your own research um, uh, research what you want from a holiday as much as what's available mm. um, and then go to your your travel advisor who will be able to uh, literally sort of tailor a cruise uh, a company into whatever your requirements are great now what about the next myth which is is still very widely believed the cruising is expensive no, again, it's um, there's just everything for, for, for every spectrum. So if you uh, want the luxury end, the, there are quite expensive cruises. Mm. Um, at certain, uh, the right far end of the cruise sector, there are super yachts, which, yeah. which are obviously going to attract a certain price. Mm. But there are budget brands as well um, and everything in between. And one of the great things about most of the mid-market and mid-stream cruise lines is that if you are uh, budget conscious, cruising allows you to budget very uh, uh, very easily because yes. a lot of it's inclusive. So your, your food is taken care of, you can buy a drinks package in advance, so that's taken care mm. of. You can organize your excursions and that's taken care of. So it, it allows for budgeting if that is a, a real issue for you. Yes, I think that's true because a very simple example is if you want to go and buy, buy a cola, uh, a glass of cola or a pint of cola of any description, in a pub, anywhere, a glass is about 150, a pint would be 2, 250, mm -hmm. something like that. And we went on a cruise with our daughter, she was about 12, and we bought a packet so she could have unlimited cola. Yeah. And it didn't half make a difference. Oh, yes, it does. Um, now, I, I go on cruises and I wouldn't buy that because I don't drink a lot of cola, yeah. so that would be not the most. But you uh, buy wine, that and tell. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But yes, it's, it's true that we, we, uh, uh, you can buy uh, um, these uh, ready-made uh, bottles that actually you just go up to a, a machine, put it in there and yeah. fill up to your heart's desire throughout the week. Is that with wine or cola? I wish it was wine. 
<laughs> so that's the great thing about it. You know up front, um, apart from excursions, which they are a different matter, you have to decide budget, how many you can afford, how many you want. Your food is included, you can get a drinks package if you want. Some ships actually do all inclusive, mm -hmm. including wine, beers, that sort of thing, local stuff. Mm -hmm. So expensive, it is not when you work out what you're getting. No, it's, it's just all about uh, a bit of pre-planning. And yeah. you can do a lot of that before you ever get near the cruise ship yeah. itself. Lovely. Now, another myth is, oh, I don't want to go on board. I know it's a floating city. It's too crowded. Uh, there are uh, cruise ships that are like floating cities, but they're not all crowded, are they? No, they're not. And even if you do go on the big ones that might have, say, four and a half thousand passengers, which straight away you're going to think, wow, that's, yeah. that's quite a big, big... I'm living in Liverpool. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big Manchester, crowd. Manchester, wherever. But, but actually, they have areas where um, there's, there's children, child-free areas, yeah. that solariums, which are separated uh, from the rest of the ship. So you don't even hear the sort of steel bands that might be playing by the, by the big pools. Mm. Yet you're literally next door to it. They just have sliding doors. And then you go through to this solarium it's quiet it's a child free zone so you can get areas where there is uh, um, a little bit more space um, and the children also have their uh, zones where adults aren't allowed you know teenagers yeah. have their zones as well so there's there's a, a I would say with again it probably sounds like a cliche but cruises do really cater for every aspect of a holiday and whatever your requirement is right so it's a bit like any other holiday you have to decide what you you, you, you want and also another another myth is oh, I won't be able to get off, I'll be stuck on board, um, you know, I'll be bored sitting on a ship for a week or whatever. That's wrong, obviously. It's very wrong. Um, I, I, my wife was very much like that. I got my wife into cruising back in 2013. Oh, right. And How she, did she not want to cruise? Had no, she, not she, she had all, all the myths we're talking about now were very much front of mind. Yeah. So she, uh, first of all, there was motion sickness. Um, that was a big oh. one for her. Then there was um, mass catering. She didn't want to get into that. Then she yeah. didn't want to sit at the same table as people that were on the, uh, the same ship all the time. Yeah. Then she thought, oh, I can't cope with 4,000 people around me. I took her on what's called a taster cruise, and we now do two cruises a year. Then oh. she, she leads the charge. So, um, yeah, there's, there's, there's just cruises for, for uh, all manner of people. Right, so you're not stuck on board. And the other one, now this is my husband. He says, I get bored. I'll get bored on cruises. He went on one with me, but we were looking after my mum, who's uh, getting on a bit. But he, he started actually embracing the things that you can do so there is no reason for you to be bored on board a ship no and in fact the the, the area that gets highlighted most is what they call a sea day which is where you're at sea literally mm all day long so you don't have the option to, to go on land and you would think if you have that sort of uh, uh, frame of mind that that is going to be ultra boring but it's not because they organize literally everything from you know if line dancing or ballroom dancing is your thing that's organized uh, if rock climbing is your thing if surfing if mini golf is your thing that's there but they also have things like enrichment uh, uh, sessions oh, yes. where they have lectures yeah um, I just came back from uh, a cruise this summer where they had uh, a superb lecture on Richard III and, and oh, being wow. re entombed. And the chap that was talking us through had worked on the, the team that had done the carbon dating. That was fascinating. Yes. And that was on a sea day. And then, of course, you, you can just sit and relax and read a book, whether it's in their library or whether it's on the deck. Yes, and they have nice libraries, actually. Mm. Another, another myth is oh, um, it's not a cultural experience. I like a bit of culture. You know, you get certain people that say, no, 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 it's like a floating hotel. It can be cultural, can't it? Oh, yes, without a doubt. And it, it can be cultural from everything. Uh, the, the, the most noticeable thing is that as you're on your way into port, many different cruise lines will have somebody give you a lecture about what is happening in the port mm. that you're going into. So, for example, I went into Malta and uh, we had a lecture on the Knights of St. John and all that sort of stuff. So it sets it up, you get the context before you just arrive in the port of right. what the, the, the history is of that place. Yeah. And then you can go, the, the excursions available are, are huge in terms of uh, the variety of choice. And if you really do want to try local cuisine or see local dancing or, or, or experience local uh, culture in any way, there is always the excursions that will do that mm. for you as well. And also you hear cruising isn't for children. 
Oh no, I, I, I think it's uh, almost the opposite. Actually, yeah, you'll find any any young child that goes on it will uh, absolutely love it because they're kept occupied all the time. Um, and as I say, the cruise lines really cater for it. You know, if you look at someone like a, a Royal Caribbean or a celebrity, they've, a celebrity will address youngsters as adults. Yes. Uh, Royal Caribbean have uh, areas that are just for teenagers and, and uh, youngsters and creches and so on. And then they'll have these uh, uh, pool areas that are very much uh, designed for maybe little two-year-olds, where mm. it's just literally, you know, uh, um, And the great thing is, Mum and dad or auntie or uncle or whoever's looking after the child on the cruise with them, they can have a rest. Absolutely right. And it's yes. wonderful. Yeah. And ha happy parents make happy children <laughs> and happy children make very happy parents. Very, very true indeed. Very <laughs> Great. True. Thanks very much, Steve. Well, don't go anywhere. Steve and I will be back uh, debunking more cruise myths in just a few minutes' time. <laughs> Hello there, welcome back to Cruise Myths Debunked, where cruise industry expert Steve Dern is helping to debunk the most common cruise myths and misconceptions. They just wanted me to say that to see if I could, you know, that's what it is. <laughs> myths and misconceptions. <laughs> yeah, for, right. One of the things people worry about is having to take lots of different, the women especially, they have to take lots of different dresses and formal dresses and get dolled up every night. No, you don't have to. You can uh, literally approach any cruise whichever way you like. There are certain brands that do have stricter uh, um, dress Code, codes yeah. than others. Um, and if you do your research properly, you'll, you'll discover that. If you work with a, a cruise advisor, they'll, they'll tell you which cruise ships do that and which don't. But generally speaking, uh, and particularly in the mainstream cruise lines and brands, um, you can choose to um, avoid formal evenings if you wish, mm -hmm. um, or indulge in them. And uh, again, I find that uh, lots of people actually quite secretly like dressing up a, a little bit. Yeah, it's, it's nice. And dressing up when you're on a cruise ship is very, very different to dressing up at your local, I don't know, golf club or your social club or, or whatever. It, it's, it's very romantic. It's, it's especially, you know, in the evening, hopefully if the moon's in the sky and you can see it skittering on the waves. It's beautiful, isn't it? It is, and, and some of the restaurants are also superb on oh, those yes. ships. And if you get the combination of a, a wonderful restaurant with the ambience that the restaurant brings, beautiful food, and as you say, the, the moonlight playing on the, on the, the water, which you'll be able to see from your table. Um, I defy anyone not to find that romantic. Oh, no, it's absolutely wonderful. lovely. And talking about food, two things. Um, another myth, I'll have to eat dinner with people I don't know. Well, there's many people that like that, actually. I, I've had uh, a fellow passengers say to me, actually, we've been put on a table for two and we like to, to mix with other people. Yeah. Um, but if, you're, if that's not your scene, and that was one of the big barriers that my wife uh, put up for us when, we, uh, when I wanted to get her into cruising, you can request a table that is just for the two of you. Right. Um, and you get the same table throughout the cruise if mm. you so desire. So again, it's really down to uh, you and you'll find that nearly all the cruise brands are, are as flexible as they can be mm. in, in indulging you in that way. Yeah. And again, on the, on the subject of the restaurants and dinner, I have heard people who haven't been on cruises saying, oh, for goodness sake, if it's, you know, a thousand people on board or however many, how can the food be anything but below par? The food's going to be rubbish. They've got to be people that have not cruised. Absolutely. Um, because uh, I've been on cruise ships of all sizes and uh, whether they're big or small, you'll find that uh, the catering is, is absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, I mean, they've got some fantastic chefs. They have fantastic uh, uh, ranges of dishes. Um, some of the best meals I've ever had have been on board ships, and the big ships as well as the small ones. Yes, and I, I remember doing a piece of filming on a, on a cruise ship, and they were calling into the port, to, and the, act, the chef was actually going into the market and choosing the fresh fish and everything. Yes. You know, yes. It, was, it was better than you'd get in a normal restaurant a lot of the time. Absolutely. So that's, uh, that's a big, big myth. And again, going one forward on this, I, I've only been on two cruises and I ate for Britain. 
and <laughs> I did put on weight. You don't have to put on weight after after a cruise, do you? Or rather, not, during a cruise? Not at all, actually. But that is probably one of the big myths that you know yeah. you, you you go up at a dress size, or you go up half a stone, or whatever it might be. First of all, a lot of them, most of them, have gym facilities, and some of them are better than the gym you have down the road. Oh, I mean, they yes. really are fantastic they have uh, lots of classes so if you if you want to do spin or, or whatever it might be they have all those classes available as well they have most of them have running tracks um, yes um, and walking tracks so they have two lanes there's one for joggers and there's one for walkers mm. um, so you can do that um, and you'll find um, some of the cruise lines now even have cycling line l lanes. really yes also the innovation is a big thing in the cruise well. industry always trying to introduce innovation so you've got all that and then uh, I was talking to a chap only the other night who loses weight when he's cruising because he dances oh so right. he he goes he goes ballroom dancing and he doesn't do it through the rest of the year and he literally dances for seven or ten nights a, a week uh, mm. with his wife and he claims that he actually loses weight oh well funnily enough uh, people nowadays they'll go on low GI they'll go on Atkins sort of low carb diets or whatever and um, if you want that there's lots of amazing buffets so you can really choose whatever you want. You're not forced to eat uh, a great big three course, four course meal every night, are you? No, not at all. And if you've got any kind of dietary uh, um, restrictions or, or you need to watch anything, you can find that uh, they cater very well for that. Even if you go into the, uh, uh, the sort of buffet areas that they have rather than the sit down meals, um, you'll find they've got sugar-free uh, yes, um, areas. Yes, gluten-free, yeah, all and, of and that. So on. And yeah. um, actually, I would say to you that if there's a danger of putting weight on, it's going to the buffets. If you go to the set meals, yeah. uh, it's controlled portions. Yes, so actually, course. you know, it's moderation all things, really. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the other thing that people think is that it'd be hard on a cruise. It is very much a couple's thing, and they can't travel as a single passenger. No, I've um, again seen lots of cruise lines that cater for that. They'll have uh, um, a bar set aside and time set aside for people to mix as singles mm. if they wish to do that. Um, so there's absolutely no pressure on you to be um, in a couple or in a family unit. Right, and a lot of ships actually put single passengers on the same table if they want to. That's right, so, yeah. so they get to know each other as well. Yeah. Uh, another myth is that the cabins and even the staterooms, they're, they're very small, they're very pokey. No, uh, again, it, it, these are myths that, that have yeah. sort of got permanent in time, but you can, dis, you can dismantle them very easily. Um, staterooms uh, and cabins are basically the same thing. A stateroom just sounds a bit bigger. Yeah. Yeah. But um, they, they have variations of size. So on any ship, you will have um, a stateroom, then you'll have a, a junior suite, you'll have a, a suite above that, all the way up to presidential suites. Yeah. You'll have suites that have two three bedrooms in them um, and you'll have um, I was on the Harmony of the Seas earlier this year and they've got uh, uh, loft uh, suites where you've actually got an upstairs and a downstairs no. area yes yeah oh. so um, the myth that you've got a little porthole uh, yeah. uh, uh, window and uh, it's all very narrow is is couldn't be further from the truth uh, you know, I, I can vouch for that I did some filming on Regent Seven Seas that's what it was called nice brand uh, fabulous uh, fabulous ship and we were in the port we were in Venice and they gave me a cabin to get changed in and it was it was their standard double cabin and it was beautiful absolutely beautiful and it had a, a, a sofa and coffee table ensuite mm. the lot and that was just the standard one. It was miles big enough. It was lovely. Mm. And you'll find that on most of the uh, the mainstream ships that they'll have a little sofa, they'll have a little uh, dressing uh, yeah. table area, and you're right, a flat screen TV mm. and a, a bathroom. Yeah. Now another thing, people say, oh, you've got to, you've got to have a balcony. Now I don't necessarily agree because I don't think you're in your room long enough to to need anything other than a bed and an ensuite. Yeah. The balconies, they're a nice little added extra, but you don't. It's not the be-all and end-all, is it? Well, again, it comes down to personal preference. I have to say that I would differ with you. I love a balcony. Yeah. Um, it's, a, it's a big part of uh, the, the process when I go through a criteria. Yeah, right. And that's because you can sit and have a, a, a drink uh, uh, in your own balcony, maybe away from the hurly-burly of the, the rest of the ship at mm. moments of, of that nature. But I also know people who say, well, I'm not in my cabin long enough. I just get my head down yes. and then I'm off. So it really depends. Right. The other thing, people think you always have to fly to join a cruise ship. 
You don't, do you? No, not at all. In fact, um, from the UK now, you've got uh, ships leaving from uh, Newcastle, Tilbury, Liverpool, uh, Southampton, of course, which is the big one. And if you are not into flying, um, going out of somewhere like, say, Southampton, which is one of the major ports, um, it's an absolute uh, pleasure. I, I went from Southampton a couple of times earlier this year, and there's no two-hour wait while you're waiting for the, the gate for, for the aircraft. There's no uh, security. Well, there is security, but it's not the hassle that you get at an airport so from parking my car to going through security to being sat on the balcony of mm. my cruise ship was probably 25 minutes. oh that's just brilliant isn't it mm. absolutely lovely and the other thing that people worry about nowadays we're all so used to instant communication your ipad your laptop your, your, your iphone or your whatever phone you have people worry that they won't actually once you're out in the middle of the sea you can't keep in touch with family and friends. No, I think that might have been five or ten years ago, but that's certainly not now. All the cruise lines are investing very heavily in technology in very various different ways. But internet connectivity is probably the one area, and you'll yeah. see a lot of them now investing in that. Um, so that it's uh, uh, some of them can even you can be downloading movies and, and all sorts of things. That's really? how that's how high the quality is. Whoa! So that's really moved on then, hasn't it? That's right. Yeah, yeah. and that's the wireless bit. Of course, they've also got their their uh, business centres and things that yeah. you can use as well. All right, and just in a couple of words, I I heard an old lady, lovely woman, but she's she'd cruised on the Queen Mary, she'd cruised on the Queen to everything. She's lovely. She said, "Oh dear." Um, cruising's lost its charm and glamour now. There are too many people doing it. What would you say to that? No, I think it's the opposite, actually. I don't think it's lost any of that uh, yeah. um, cool and glamour area. I think what it's done is it's opened uh, for a whole new generation of people the opportunity to see and experience the world in a very different way from traditional means. Absolutely. If you want the tradition, you can have it. But if you don't, it's there for Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Absolutely brilliant. And thanks to you as well for watching. Uh, hopefully, I'll see you again next time here on TV Cruise Channel.